happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Uh, this is a question that comes from the engineer inside me. Are you following the AI revolution based on whatever is happening in the world? I'm sure you are. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that was just an intro to the question. Okay, that's podcasting techniques. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the role of AI. I would love for you to also give an input on the role of quantum computing because it's come up in geopolitical conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you look at it from your perspective? The future of technology, I don't know if you should watch this uh, show called Black Mirror. No, I haven't. Okay, it's about the technologies that are upcoming. Mm -hmm. And Yuval Noah Harari says that the stuff they've shown in Black Mirror is so realistic. It's either already happening or it's going to happen in 5 to 10 yes. years. Or it'll happen once you watch the show. <laughs> Possibly. Because science fiction determines where science goes. Uh. But uh, do you follow uh, whatever is happening in the world of engineering technology? And how do you look at it affecting our country, our foreign policy, etc, etc? You know, I'm not an engineer. And I'll give you what I hope is like a common sense answer from my perspective. And I'll take you back actually to your first question. Sure. You asked me, do I watch patterns? Okay. Sure, I watch patterns. That's how I do my business. That's why I think I can be good at my business. Now, just imagine I am humanly because I have limited capabilities as a human being. I'm watching the patterns of 200 people who I deal with every day. Imagine if I could process the patterns of 200 million people. Okay. That's the world which is, you are talking about. That uh, with each one of us, we are uh, like a walking emitter of electronic patterns. Okay. You know, what you download, what you say, what you listen to, what you buy, what you eat. You're creating, I mean, earlier on, there would have been a pattern, but you couldn't see it. Okay. Today, that pattern is organized. It has actually become a business. It has become politics. It has become strategy. It is actually, at the end of the day, this, this uh, how do you uh, m sort of mega process patterns? And that then gives you a fantastic edge. So, I mean, imagine, imagine a Virat Kohli who has at his fingertips everything about everybody is ever going to be batting against. Man, that's a dream world, isn't it? To be able to predict each delivery, each strategy. So maybe the way we should build out artificial intelligence as humans is we should develop an AI-based assistant for you. <laughs> for you to be able to, you know, yeah, that's Don't worry, it'll happen. <laughs> or is it already happening? You never know. Okay. Um, how often do quantum computing conversations come up? Because it's come up on the show from a geopolitical perspective. The first country that cracks it will... Right now, actually, if you ask me what's Right on our plate, it's much more semiconductors. You know, there's this whole chip war, uh, which is going on. You can say a tech war, which is going on. Uh, so a lot of what we are doing today is about that. Uh, and uh, uh, it's about uh, how do you actually prepare uh, for an era where, you know, uh, sort of chips, you can say, is the new oil. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, uh, in fact, I, you know, I, I was uh, a week ago in Europe uh, and uh, uh, thereafter with the PM in uh, the, at the Quad in, uh, in uh, Japan. And uh, a big part of those conversations were really about how, you know, countries cooperate to ensure uh, what we call trusted collaboration, which is uh, uh, countries who have that uh, faith in each other. Uh, who have similar systems, we use the word like-minded. You know, these are normally market economies, democracies, uh, sort of uh, how, you know, people with companies who follow uh, company ethics and rules yes. like we know. How do these countries really come together and create a, a kind of a supply chain? Now, here's the bit which I think particularly uh, your younger listeners should look at. Uh, there was a time 10 years ago maybe more, seven, eight years ago even. I used to go around telling people, saying, you know, look, uh, you need to open up your economy more, you know, mobility. There's Indians who would be looking for uh, opportunities to work because we, we really start, uh, especially under Prime Minister Modi, he, one thing he keeps dinning into us, you know, think 
of the world as a global workplace. Okay, this is one like regular message we get from him in every possible way. As a global workplace, work, global workplace that okay. don't think, you know, your work opportunities could be anywhere. Now it's your job in foreign policy to open up those doors. Okay, you know why should a talented Indian be restricted? Okay, now if you are going to work everywhere and. This doesn't have to be rocket science, okay? I mean, you have people working in merchant shipping and air crews, uh, in blue collar jobs, in professional jobs, a chartered account, any profession you take. How do you actually give a full kind of uh, space for Indian talent to do its best? Now, coming back to this, I find because today we are moving into that tech competition or tech wars era, there's a huge demand today for trusted talent, for people who play by the rules, who understand how the international uh, you know, business systems work, skilled people, talented people. And these are, you know, these are the age group, you know, we are looking at kind of below 35s. They are massively in demand uh, in the world. And we just came out of Australia. We did a mobility agreement uh, the week before I signed one with Austria. Austria, you know, is not a country which you immediately think of in terms of uh, migration. Uh, we've done it with Germany, uh, with a number of European countries, and even with the US. Uh, you know, Prime Minister is going to be going there next month. Uh, a lot of it is, look, uh, how do we create the flows? Now, these kind of flows are going to be very different. It's, you know, it's like the world. You are very familiar, perhaps more than me. Your habits change. People don't have to leave India anymore to work somewhere. The global workplace doesn't mean you shift your place. It just means your employer doesn't have to be in the same town or the same country. You know, or the service you render doesn't have to be there. So that's the kind of world you know, we are getting prepared for. So for me, if you look at the, at the tech space, uh, the global workplace, the mobility, the semiconductor, the what are called critical emerging technologies, this is really what is sucking up the oxygen. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.